in late 1944. Reports of mysterious and slow-moving flying objects began cropping up across the Pacific Northwest in the United States. The sightings were often followed by a whistling sound and unexplained explosions. It was a puzzle for local authorities, who initially feared that Japanese aircraft were somehow reaching the U.S. mainland and dropping bombs with parachutes. Why the Japanese would target random forests was not known. It was not until one of these unusual objects came crashing down intact that the U.S. military finally understood what they were up against. The device was a new kind of weapon, sent all the way from Japan. It was a discovery so startling at the time that the U.S. government asked American news not to report it to the public. The end of the war was increasingly tough on the Japanese, particularly for its Imperial Navy. The morale among the citizens was exceptionally low following the American Doolittle Raid, an attack on Tokyo in April of 1942. Although the American bombers had done little damage to the city, it had left citizens feeling vulnerable. The Imperial Navy decided to explore balloon bombs, charging Technical Lieutenant Commander Kiyoshi Tanaka to work on a prototype under the Army's 9th Military Technical Research Institute. Although materials were scarce, he managed to design a working model. By 1944, he had constructed a 29.5-foot balloon with rubber-covered panels of silk. The fabric lets the balloon be flexible enough to withstand expansion and contraction, led by varying air pressure, while making it durable and leak-proof. The Imperial Army separately developed another balloon, which would be more commonly used. It was made of paper, which made it less expensive, although less reliably durable. Even so, the paper balloons could carry more weights and measured 32.8 feet in diameter. To keep the paper together, the makers used an adhesive made from the root of arums. The balloons were made waterproof through a lacquer-like coat made from fermented green persimmons. Tanaka's rubber balloons were only used to collect data. 34 were sent, and none with explosives. Only the paper balloons were used to bomb the enemy. Four incendiary bombs of modest size would be placed inside each paper balloon, along with a 33-pound anti-personnel cluster munition bomb that would instantly explode upon arrival and release shrapnel with a reach of up to 300 feet. The idea of using balloon bombs can be traced back to the occupation of Manchuria in the 1930s. During the conflict, the Japanese wanted to attack the Siberian Soviets on the other side of the Amur River. They planned on doing so by sending balloons with propaganda leaflets. The idea was never executed, but Japan's military scientists still collected data and made valuable assessments about flying balloons over long distances. Later on, the Japanese would reassess the technique when considering options for special troops transport and bombing. Their new version was almost exclusively used to bomb the United States in the 1940s. To get them to cross the ocean, the Japanese relied on a brisk stream of air that moves eastward over the Pacific Ocean. In the early 1940s, the Japanese bought daily weather maps and reports from the U.S. Weather Bureau following the discovery of the Pacific Ocean's jet stream, which traveled at high altitude. Thanks to the jet stream, it was possible for a balloon to launch from Japan and fly 30,000 feet above the ocean for a couple of days and then land in America. The U.S. would not learn about the jet stream until it began long-distance bombing campaigns towards the end of the war. Starting in the summer of 1942, the Japanese began toying with the idea of using balloon bombs on the island of Guadalcanal. One proposal was to attach grenades to piano wire held in the air by balloons so that the U.S. Marine fighter aircraft would crash into them as they took off from airfields on the island. 
American dominance over the island beginning in September forced them to reconsider. The Japanese then decided on a transcontinental bombing route with two possible outcomes. One likely possibility was that incendiary bombs would cause fires in the forested areas of the Northwest. It was hoped that the explosions would bind military and civilian resources to America, as well as creating millions of dollars in damage. The other possible outcome was to cause psychological distress to the United States. They named the project FUGO, which James M. Powell's described to the 2003 issue of the World War II Journal, saying, quote, It called for sending bomber-carrying balloons from Japan to set fire to the vast forests of America, in particular those of the Pacific Northwest. It was hoped that the fires would create havoc, dampen American morale, and disrupt the U.S. war effort. The paper balloons also carried sensors, triggering devices, and other mechanisms to ensure detonations would only take place on the American continent. On November 3, 1944, the Japanese sent the first 6,000 balloon bombs across the ocean. While the weather was not ideal for starting a forest fire, they hoped that the public's reaction would guide the continuation of the program. The Japanese hoped the panic would demoralize the citizens of the United States while inspiring their own soldiers. Estimates from expert historians and geographers have concluded that it took anywhere from 30 to 60 hours for a balloon bomb to travel from Japan to the West Coast. One of the main downsides to this contraption was the lack of certainty over speed and target by the variation in atmospheric conditions. Geoscientist expert Dave Tewksbury from Hamilton College in New York has stated that, quote, an awful lot of this was just put them up there and see what happens. On the other hand, this provided the apparent benefit for the Japanese that was keeping their soldiers out of harm's way. When the balloons started raining upon America, those who encountered the explosions had no clue of where they came from. Through forensic geology, the American military was able to identify Japan as the culprit. It's been claimed that sand from one of the contraptions helped the U.S. Geological Survey assess their origin. Airborne balloon bombs began showing up throughout the western side of America at the end of 1944. The first attack was discovered on November 3rd, near the coast of San Pedro, California. It was intercepted by a U.S. Navy patrol. The device was one of the rubber Tanaka balloons with a radio transmitter. The first recorded explosion took place on December 6th, on the outskirts of Thermopolis, Wyoming. A local newspaper reported on it believing the bomb had been dropped from a plane because witnesses reported observing a parachute with flares right before the explosion. The local authorities did not search for the parachute, since they believed the witnesses had only seen a landing flare. Allegedly, there were no injuries. Reports of the explosion primarily came from coal mine workers from the area. Only a couple of days later, a bomb was found by Kalispell in Montana. The local sheriff's department assessed the device. A paper balloon with a gas relief valve and an incendiary bomb. The authorities confiscated the equipment for review. The FBI, Army, and Navy all had a chance to inspect the device, concluding it came from Japan, but still unsure of how it arrived in the U.S. One of the balloons that managed to cause some harm fell on a power line in Washington State. It cut off the energy of Hanford Engineer Works, where the government was manufacturing plutonium for nukes. After the war ended, reported sightings and incidents with the balloon bombs kept popping up. Seven Nebraskan towns received at least one of them. One was found near Detroit and another by Grand Rapids. In the years that followed, they kept being randomly found. Towards the end of 1953, one of the balloon bombs was located and exploded by the army in Edmonton, Alberta. Another of the bombs was found in Alaska in 1955. In the mid-1980s, author and researcher Bert Weber set out to trace as many of these explosive devices as possible. He found 25 in California, 28 in Washington, 37 in Alaska, and 45 in Oregon. 
the bombs kept popping up. As recently as 2014, when the Royal Canadian Mounted Police received reports of one of them in British Columbia, they used C4 explosives to destroy it. American authorities reacted swiftly to the new threat. They ordered all news organizations to ignore the balloon attacks, a request that the press complied with. Military and civilian authorities collaborated appropriately. The FBI, the U.S. Forest Service, and the Department of Agriculture all mobilized to help recover the balloons or residual material, which were then sent to Caltech University of the Naval Research Laboratory. The FBI feared that Japan might use the bombs to commence a biological attack. Although understandable on the American side, Japan never actually considered such a thing. To protect Americans from the strange, randomized attacks, the Western Defense Command sent planes to supervise the coast and around 2,700 troops to critical points for firefighting. Still, the most crucial front on the balloon war may have been the media. The Japanese, who had to fuel their propaganda machine, published stories of massive fires and high death tolls from their balloon attacks. Most of these stories were fake or embellished beyond the point of even slightly resembling reality. The Japanese high command didn't know much about the fate of their balloons until the war ended. The balloon attacks ended on May 1st, 1945. There are two prevalent theories as to why the Japanese canceled the Fuko project. The first theory holds that the Japanese High Command was under the impression that none or a few of the balloon bombs were landing on America due to the lack of news reports on the subject. The second theory holds that the continued American air raids of Japan could have interfered with the manufacture of balloon bombs. Similarly, disruptions to railroads may have made it complicated, if not impossible, to distribute the materials used to make the balloons. In total, the Japanese Imperial Army launched over 6,000 balloon bombs. Hundreds were seen flying above or were found on the ground in the United States. To this day, only a couple hundred of the contraptions have been found, but the majority unaccounted for. Since America silenced the detonations by silencing the media, the true extent of Japan's balloon raid may never be known. <laughs> 